a strike which we will be tackling a little bit later because both sides have maintained a hard line stance and uh, no, no, no sight and end. And unfortunately, the also clinical, of, clinical officers said that they will also be joining their colleagues in about a week. We'll be talking about uh, that. Other than that, we do realize that uh, a number of things are also happening. We have the current, the current politics of the day. We, do we have a constitutional crisis? Uh, the reason I'm asking this is because the, the, uh, the constituency's delimitation, the days are gone. What is the next frontier? I will be joined by two MPs that will be on the second hour where we'll be tackling the state of the nation. But on this first hour, we will be looking at uh, raising morally up, uh, upright children and especially now that the schools are almost closing how do we go about this the government has embarked on uh, an ambitious program to rid the country of all the drugs all the narcotics and all the illicit alcohol unfortunately nakada says that young young men and women to the age of 13 14 are also engaging in drugs and substance abuse and we are now joined by two two officials from the um, Kenya Students Christian Fellowship will be telling us more about that. And the moment that you hear about fellowship, we are going to ensure that our kids and our students do exactly grow upright. And that is a topic that we are going to be having now. My name is Bentro Enjoy. Lensa Odingo is a sign language code interpreter for this live show. Of course, for comments, suggestions, or even where you are watching us from, we highly recommend you reach us via all our social media spaces as we are live. Now, straight to my panelists, just beginning from my immediate left. On my immediate left, we have Gladys Karani. Gladys Karani is the National Field Coordinator for the Kenya Students Christian Fellowship. And just next to her, we have Eric Lumosi, who is the Greater Nairobi Region Coordinator. And it's a good thing that we have someone from Nairobi because Nairobi has been mentioned as one of the counties where the preference of drugs and substance abuse is quite rife. Lady and gentlemen, Karibuni san. Thank you so much. And after that long introduction, kindly tell us more about what you guys are doing at the Kenya Student Christian Fellowship. Some people are hearing it for the first time. Sure. Gladys. Yes. So thank you very much for this opportunity to talk about uh, Kenya Student Christian Fellowship and the work that we are doing. And uh, uh, we are doing a great work that maybe has not come out uh, really to the public. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, privately, even in schools, we have a lot of uh, work going on. We have uh, a, a, a good network of uh, people who are born again, associates. Mm -hmm. KSEF workers who reach out to the schools, uh, to the students in schools mm -hmm. on a daily basis. That is to say, on Sunday to Sunday, we have uh, uh, associates going to schools to minister to the students. Mm -hmm. And also to, uh, we have uh, several programs that we have in KSEF that they go to reach out to, uh, mm -hmm. to the students with. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are some of the programs that have uh, really helped the mm -hmm. students uh, to grow. We call them students because when they're in school, they're the students, but of course they're our youth. Mm -hmm. And uh, these programs are geared toward uh, having a generation of role model Christian who are having godly values and uh, playing an active and positive role in church and society. Mm -hmm. And so these programs are, are really uh, tailor-made for the students to help them mm -hmm. uh, with their character and even uh, with, the, with the even uh, spiritual life. That is uh, to ensure that they know there is God mm -hmm. and also to live for God mm -hmm. and to be able to understand the Christian faith mm -hmm. and to be able uh, to defend their faith mm -hmm. and to stand for God. Mm -hmm. And this and this happening is uh, transforming the lives of many students. Mm -hmm. uh, KSEF has been known among the students for many years. It began in 1958 mm -hmm. and has continued doing a lot of work in the high schools. Mm -hmm. Yes, Eric, maybe you can touch on now that we are almost the schools are almost closed, yes. and we know very well that a lot of uh, uh, growing up, so to speak, happens during the holidays, whether good or bad. If it's uh, the drugs and everything, mostly those students kind of get into bad company during holidays. What exactly are you guys doing to ensure that uh, we change this narrative? Yeah, thank you so much, Brother Njiwe. Welcome. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today to discuss the youth, our children who are uh, 
with us. Some are in school, some are in colleges, mm. and uh, there is need that there is uh, people that are concerned about uh, their welfare, mm -hmm. about their upbringing, mm -hmm. so that they are able to come up and mature as men and women that are dependable, that are independent, that are able to stand out to the society and even for their own selves. Mm -hmm. So as a ministry, uh, actually as uh, Gladys puts it, it started way back in 1958 mm -hmm. and it has continued to mold the young person. Mm -hmm. And over time, looking at the people that have embraced it, have grown to mature and even become elders that still uphold this movement, in because they started with it, they saw the benefit, and they have continued with it up to today. Mm. Those are the associates. Mm -hmm. So uh, the activities cuts across the board. Mm -hmm. When the students are in school, and also mm -hmm. during the time that they are at home, we also have got programs to continue helping them mm -hmm. so that they cannot uh, uh, lose out and uh, go astray. Mm. So uh, some of these activities will include the trainings and the conferences that we hold. Mm -hmm. We pull them together, students coming from various schools, and as they come together, we continue to train them on the values that mm -hmm. are acceptable mm -hmm. and also address some of the challenges, and especially the emerging challenges that are coming today. Mm -hmm. We are talking about drugs and substance abuse. We are talking about the issue of sexuality mm -hmm. upon our girls and boys that are just uh, growing up. We are talking up, uh, about uh, some of the the issues, even in terms of their dressing, in terms of their religion, how they're supposed to uphold the, the, the values that are acceptable to the society. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we get time to pull them together, like in this season, in the month of April, from 5th to 12th, we shall be having a national event mm -hmm. where we are grouping students in four counties, uh, in four blocks. Mm -hmm. One will be at Kabianga High School, mm -hmm. another one will be at uh, uh, Chania Boys High School, and then the third block will be at uh, Kagumo High School, and then we shall have one at Kwale. Mm -hmm. And we shall be assembling young people in that meeting, even to a tune of three, four thousand students together. Mm -hmm. And in that one week, they continue to be trained and to be helped to know about the challenges that young people are talking uh, that, that are facing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we even bring in uh, the, 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 the guys from the narcotics uh, mm -hmm. uh, AP, they come and they are able to demonstrate to them about uh, these drugs and their effects and how much they are able to drain the life of somebody such that is unable to pick up and go on mm -hmm. as God expected of them. So we, 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 we besides that, we also get some pertinent authority men and women that are either lecturers, some of them are in the society as lawyers, some mm -hmm. of them are religious people uh, mm -hmm. that, are, that, 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 that are ministering to people and mm -hmm. they come on board and as they come they are able to demonstrate to these young people about some of the effects of whatever that they may begin and it's advice mm -hmm. so that they can only but help them to uphold mm. on the values that are acceptable, which will cause them to become men and women that are quality, mm. people that are able to help themselves in life and also the society. Mm. So these are some of the things that we do, but now during the holidays. Okay. Sometimes we also have got training of the various leaders, mm. various leaders in school. We pull them together so that again we continue to help them to know mm some of the, the the characteristics and the qualities of a leader mm. we also help them to understand uh, some of the ways that they can become better leaders uh, and by so doing you find that you continue to shape their life mm. you continue to help them to get the skills that are acceptable ac skills that are going to help not only when they are leading uh, in school or they are potential leaders mm -hmm. because here we are looking at the student council, mm -hmm. we are looking at the society's leaders, we are for, uh, for example those that are in CU, those that are in scouting, those that are in various groupings in schools and they are together and we help them to understand about godly way of leading mm -hmm. and by so doing they are able to get these skills and these skills are able to help them to stand out mm -hmm. even when they go back you mm -hmm. find that uh, in their tenor, there is some impact 
there is something that is happening and that is helping them even to continue uh, life. Uh, all right. And uh, I, I like how you are actually approaching this by ensuring that you have camps and in four distinct places so that you may be able to cater for the thousands of youths who... Um, are interested in this and um, going to you Gladys I've, we have seen um, her excellencies that is the first lady uh, Madam Rachel Ruto we also have seen the, the spouse of Deputy President Pastor Dorcas Rigadi we have seen them on the forefront of ensuring that we are also change the narrative because the boy child to some extent is being sidelined what exactly are you doing to ensure that you also cascade what exactly they are saying about how we bring in the boy child who a little bit seems to be on the sidelines uh, thank you very much let me begin by saying that uh, Kenya Student Christian Fellowship is in 44 counties and in out of the 44 counties is that uh, we have associates who are uh, working mm -hmm. uh, to reach out to the students in high school. Mm -hmm. Now we, are, we count it as a privilege to have the first lady, even the second lady uh, joining us uh, in KSEF. Mm -hmm. We are always looking for partnership mm -hmm. uh, with uh, even the government officials. And so uh, we count it as a privilege and we thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Now, the, 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 the boy child, the students, uh, for us, we reach out to both girls, uh, boy, girls and boys. Mm -hmm. And uh, now that uh, we have seen the neglect of um, the boy child in terms of, uh, there are many areas that are coming out that if there is a drug addiction mostly is uh, with the, the boy child mm -hmm. and also uh, even uh, education we find that uh, the girl child have been educated more than the boy child mm -hmm. and uh, at this time we are saying that uh, we are coming out even coming up strongly to support that vision of a uh, uh, boy child uh, raising them up mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, we have also uh, even in we are also in touch with the the second lady mm -hmm. and we are also drawing a plan on how that shall be done mm -hmm. because uh, the programs that we have are, uh, uh, they equip even the boy child also uh, to have to be morally upright because actually even the Bible tells us that when we mold them when they are younger, even when they are older, they will not depart from it. Mm. And so when we re realize that there's a, the, the biblical principle of mm. raising them up when they are young, and that's why we want to focus that when they're in high school, that is the right stage where now we can mold them and uh, for them to value um, the things of God early and mm -hmm. also their lives to be shaped so that uh, when uh, they come to make the decision, they, they make the right choices. Mm -hmm. Because I believe it is the wrong choices that uh, the boy child is making mm -hmm. yeah. that is causing all these issues of them engaging in uh, such evil vices. And mm -hmm. uh, we have continued praying for them reaching out to them, we have a program called Peer to Peer Program in KSEF that is designed to, to disciple the students, to evangelize first. They receive, because once we know that uh, people cannot be changed, uh, cannot change themselves, they cannot be cha changed by mere words. It takes the power of God to change uh, a, the, the, a person. And so that's why we take the, thing, the word of God very seriously that it is the word of God that is able to save them. Mm. So what we do, we design programs that are going, we are going to evangelize to them. They receive Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and then uh, the power of the Holy Spirit will change their character, okay. and then they will be morally upright, and we shall have uh, a, a people, a group of uh, young men mm. who are uh, fearing God and living for God. Okay. Because, because it all comes now to the Lord uh, doing the work in the life of these young people. All right, let's go to alcohol and substance abuse and the government has been quite vocal about it and especially in the last couple of um, let's say a couple of weeks 18,000 pubs have been closed and illegal distillers have also closed down I would like to pick your mind in regards to this and what you intend to do in the camp that uh, you have the four camps that you've organized after our kids school, uh, closed school yeah thank you so much enjoy I think uh, the, 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 the government is taking the right route, actually, in ensuring that we are able to have a population that is sober, a population that is even working, a population that is dependent and responsible, and especially when we look at the boy child. 
And the aspect of the closing of the bus for me is a very positive move, a very wonderful trajectory that the government is taking. And even yesterday, as I saw what was happening, I was like, this is the good thing that is happening in this nation. Mm. And uh, in regard now to the young people that we are having and we shall be assembling them together, you realize that that topic of the substance abuse will not be left out. It is a topic that we have to cover with the young people mm. so that they are able to look into like if everybody else is against this and in case somebody is like wants to propagate about alcoholism you realize even biblically those guys that went into alcoholism there is nothing good that came out of them it was all bad it was all shame it was just a disaster mm. and therefore it is not anything that anybody can embrace and therefore it is some of the things and the 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 the, the discussions that we shall be having you find that even in this camp we shall be grouping these young boys together in groups and in that group we have got a facilitator leader that is helping them to discuss mm. about even what is happening currently and we look at what are some of the negativities that comes along with the alcoholism mm. Mm. and uh, what are some of the things that we can do so that we are able to avoid this kind of behavior mm -hmm. and uh, through that discussion you find that indeed we are able to bring uh, the, the, this person that is in that group understands uh, that it's not anything good mm. to go in into drugs, anything good even to go into alcoholism. Mm -hmm. And therefore, by all means, they will avoid mm -hmm. at their level and mm -hmm. also continue to help others who may be having that problem of uh, drugs and substance abuse through counsel. And, uh, and I like what uh, uh, Madame puts it. We have got that peer-to-peer -peer counsel okay. where, like for example, in an institution, mm -hmm. we have got a population of 1,000, 2,000 or even more. But we have, for example, a counselor a guiding and counseling person who is one mm. in that institution. You know, they're not able to reach all those students. Therefore, through this program of the peer-to-peer -peer counseling, mm -hmm. we are able to pull a few together, okay. help them. We'll be talking about counseling and also rehabilitation because at the end of the day, there are some youths who are quite immersed in mm. maybe drugs and substance abuse and they need help now before it turns out to be something bigger later in life mm. um, now we are also joined by another guest his name is Newton Ogada Newton Ogada is the director God will provide and also a governance and leadership expert and he has a, a a number of children so he will also be telling us what he has lined up and especially to ensure that during the holidays which is a red zone it doesn't they doesn't they do not enter into drugs and substance abuse or into other activities that are not legal. Newton, Karibusan. Thank you. Uh, first things first, the schools are just closing and there's a spirited campaign to fight drugs and substance abuse which is also geared towards helping and guiding our children, especially when they are in holiday. What exactly do you do to ensure that um, your kids do not venture into other things? And you have a number of kids. Thank you, uh, Benson. I'm sorry I'm late because of traffic. Uh, no problem. Uh, but uh, the discussion is really uh, good uh, because the, our children are actually getting influenced in things which are not supposed to be. And before I say anything, I can only advise our youth that I was a youth before. Mm -hmm. I, I did not just come from nowhere and then I reached this my level. But there was a lot of uh, discussion during our time. And our parents were putting us next to them all the time and give us a lot of work to do so that we don't be uh, hung around to get influence. But the problem which is affecting the whole country or the whole global now is the media influence. You know, these are our children when they, when they go back home, like now we are going to close, you'll find our, their parents and uh, their friends have these phones and they can go to YouTube and... They have a lot of influence, which is actually affecting our uh, the, the new the, 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 uh, our youths and this generation. So the way I've been doing mine, like you know, I'm running an orphanage uh, a home, which now even the government is trying to close all the orphanage homes. But uh, this was actually helping our children to be together during the holiday, mm -hmm. because this is a place where, as our sisters said, they need uh, a spiritual aspect in all day and night because they're children and they easily to get influence uh, so uh, before there was this issue of closing the children's homes 
Uh, this has been uh, a big help because we gather them together all the time, we teach them, we give them something to do. Mm -hmm. But now it's becoming uh, a, bit, a little bit difficult when we take them back to their uh, grandparents who somehow has no control over them because of, you know, the children of today. But um, another thing which is bringing our youths, most so the ones who are actually finished their high school, to get in, in, in involved in such uh, 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 addictive is the social grouping, you know. Uh, they influence so much in this alcoholic and uh, uh, addiction towards the drugs. Mm. And it's, it's actually it's, it's, um, it's affecting the whole country. And again, um, I had, we discussed about uh, our, the Tivets, which actually are, they are going to close to and everybody is going to be home. We need to advise our children to join the Tivet uh, 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 colleges so that they can get something that they can, they can keep them busy. Mm -hmm. But due to the holiday, I am just requesting our youths, whoever is taking care of the youths or the parents, in most of the parents must be involved, like maybe 90%. To engage their children when they are in holiday uh, for two or three weeks. If we don't do so, we are going to enter into this uh, a problem which is affecting the country. Mm -hmm. uh, number three, uh, about the alcoholic and uh, uh, drug addiction, which is now affecting the number of youths. I think the government can actually work on this and finish it. Mm -hmm. And again, we are, again we still need the nourishment. We have to have time with our children uh, to take them through the Bible and uh, uh, serious prayers and engage them in the youth services in churches. Mm -hmm. So at least even if they have time, they can socialize with the word. And the word is doing uh, more than what the government can do because mm -hmm. the word is the power, you sure. know. And when we put them through that, there will be people like us because our parents did the same. We were being told to go to church. But ad again, there's another thing that um, I'm requesting all our parents and guardians to take care. A youth is a child. You don't, let, don't say they can manage themselves and they, they have their rights. At times, we don't let our rights to work because if we've been given a right, even us, mm -hmm. a right of everything in this country, everything will go at a mess. That's yes. why we have... Uh, 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 we, we have uh, institutions which deal with if you go against the law. So we know our rights, but let us not work over work or overuse our rights to influence mm. us into uh, such kind of uh, in, in discipline things, because I, I, I do put them as in discipline mm. uh, things. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Gladys, yes. I'm looking at where we are exactly when you talk about um, the fight against drug substance abuse and uh, narcotics. And there's also another fight, that, and especially during the COVID-19 pandemic was quite rampant, that is underage sex and also underage pregnancies. And this has been quite rampant in the coast. Uh, high levels of, of, um, of illiteracy and also high levels of poverty driving our ladies to, 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 to underage sex and um, underage pregnancies. I'm looking at the programs that the government has initiated. And in as much as they are working, they need help from institutions like yours. What exactly are you doing and gearing towards, and especially now that we, our kids are almost home, to ensure that also the girls are taken care of as we also empower the boy child? Yes, uh, thank you very much. I agree with you that uh, even teenage pregnancy is a menace in the country because I believe there was a number that uh, was given that came out, a big number, quite a huge number. It was shocking. Mm -hmm. And we can say uh, this uh, uh, has continued uh, because, you know, there are some uh, of the students who have not been able to access uh, some of these programs that we have, mm -hmm. the teachings. And, uh, of course, now the drugs, abuse, and uh, the use of uh, alcohol. And these are some of the issues that uh, we find in the schools. Many schools, when they come to us, those are some issues that we are told, we are called to go and counsel the students. And so we realize that it is a, it's a, it's a mess out there. And uh, as KSEF, uh, uh, like we have continued saying, is that uh, we have a peer counseling program where, you know, one thing we understand is that uh, the students open up to their fellow students more than they open up to the teachers. Mm. Or they can open up to their fellow students more than they open up to their fellow uh, friends, eh? more than they open up to their parents. And so what we have done is that just by knowing and doing a research and understanding, 
that these students, whatever they face, they open up with their friends. We uh, come up with a program that will help uh, the, the, uh, the students who are born again to reach out to the other ones that are uh, suffering, those who are addicted, because they know them. Even if the student may not open up, that's something that is seen openly. If it's someone who is drunk, they are able to, they, they can tell. Maybe who is the, the one who is using drugs, they are, they are well aware, more than uh, the teachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we are doing is that uh, we, are, uh, we have uh, done so much research uh, on that. And uh, it, we are prayerfully even uh, approaching that issue with a lot of confidence that uh, this is going to decline in, in a huge percent. Because this program that has come up where the student is able to reach out to their fellow student mm -hmm. is a place where that we train a student how to evangelize. Because we understand that this person to abandon or leave uh, these drugs and stop using them, it can only take the power of God, God helping someone to get out of it. And so what we are doing is that this program, we are training the students who are born again, who are devoted to God, on how to reach out to their fellow students. Mm -hmm. And in a way that uh, they, they, they can approach the students, evangelize, have them turn from their evil ways, mm -hmm and then disciple them so that they get rooted mm. in the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, you you're, you're maybe um, using those who may be um, born again and maybe have gone through a program to educate others. I think yes, for, that's, for that's, that's the way. It's easier if you go for the bush itself, not about beating about the bush by sending others to, to do that. I think it will be easier and uh, more effective if you guys mm -hmm. do it as yourselves. What happens uh -huh. is that uh, unless the students open up to us that they are going through those issues, we might not know. The mm -hmm. reason being, we are only there uh, for only one hour, could be one hour in, mm -hmm. an, in a week, because mm -hmm. the CEUs in the schools meet once uh, per, per week, mm -hmm. or maybe twice because of the Sunday service or weekend services. And you see, we are limited. Mm -hmm. And these students, they are together throughout, you can imagine, okay. in the dormitories, yeah. the classes, mm -hmm. break time. Mm -hmm. Games. Yeah, yeah games time. Mm -hmm. They are together. And we, can, we know that these students who are born again can be a very special ministers to their fellow students. And so we specialize so much on these students who are born again, that we empower them with the skills to evangelize whenever they have time, to disciple the fellow students, even to counsel them. We have Christian peer counseling. Mm. This peer, Christian peer counseling is not for associates, it's not for uh, the grown-ups, it's for the students to be able to have the skills to, uh, to, uh, to counsel a fellow student who is going, who is going through drugs, who has uh, maybe, who is going through uh, sexuality, what, has, uh, uh, what, what do I say, uh, some, some of issues that they face. Mm -hmm. they are, we train them, it's actually all around, because there are very many issues we are dealing with, and we actually even train them to counsel them through the word of God. And so this is a very special program for us, and actually it is uh, our main focus, because once we make the student a minister to their fellow students, we are sure that the, the, uh, the bigger number that we are not able to reach will be reached out every time, because they are with them, they are, they are together all the time. And so uh, we, we know that uh, it, can, it has continued declining. There was a time that uh, we had very many issues maybe of strikes in the country. Mm. That strategy really helped because the leaders were trained on how to curb these issues uh, with their fellow students. Mm. Uh, with those who were inciting others, we were training them. You, you know, uh, we say that the students have a lot of energy. Neg some, of, some of them are negative, some are positive. What we do is that these energies, we train them to use them positively, to influence their fellows positively. Mm. And so it is working. Mm. And so we have seen the declining of the teenage pregnancy mm. because it become a the word of God has prevailed in the schools where now the students are also missing. This, I'm not talking about a program that is happening in the future. It is an ongoing program that is going on even this time. Uh, mm. Began uh, uh, four years ago and has continued. We are mm. continuing increasing the schools that we are reaching out to. Even in, uh, this year we are also focusing on Christian peer counseling and we shall be dealing with such issues even in that convention that they're having in, on 6 to 12 we shall having workshops where we are dealing with the issues of with the LGBTQ mm. uh, and also issues of uh, uh, even uh, we, we train them even to uh, to to have the careers uh, to choose the career as well mm -hmm. and to have a good future yeah uh, because uh, this is the right time where they can make the right decision and show mm. them that choices has consequences if they choose to do sin, uh, to uh, sin secretly uh, the result will be public, will be open. Okay. And so we train them in the fear of the Lord and to live a righteous life.
to live in holiness, mm. which is a very, uh, very key. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me go to Eric, and I'm still on the teenage pregnancy, but away from that, just um, a sidestep. There's also the sexual predation, where you find uh, a 40-year-old man now, he has enticed an 18, a 20, a 16, a 17-year-old girl. He's providing for, for money. Actually, today, to be very practical, is that today in the morning when I was coming, uh, the, the radio, they were having a, di a, topical, a topical discussion where um, a lady has just cleared high school. He's dating a banker who has promised that he will clear all the, the school fees, uh, he will also go ahead and pay for the university. The parents are torn between, because now the child is 18, he or she can make some of his or her own decisions. But unfortunately, it is quite rampant. I'll say it again, and that is why we are having our kids, some of the kids, we are finding them murdered by some people who they've known, they hardly know. And uh, it's something that is is rife it's a discussion that we need to have with our own kids we had sponsors now they're called what um they're, they're sponsors now during our time they were sugar daddies sure. mm -hmm. yes how do we go about this yeah uh that's th wh whatever you're saying actually is happening uh it's happening uh besides the sunday services and the weekly midweeks uh, events that we have with the students mm -hmm. We also have uh, the weekend challenges. During these weekend challenges, uh, we address all this. And I remember very recently we were in one of the, those weekend challenges, and uh, there was the, the panel discussion just like we are, but we had students all over asking questions. Uh, they were writing the questions that they want addressed. And uh, whatever you're saying was actually alive, even in the group. A girl mm -hmm. tells you, you know what? I have been dating this young boy who is in the university, and because of the favors, that is why I have to befriend him. And uh, because if I do not sleep with him, he will go to another girl, mm -hmm. and things yeah. like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, 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 and uh, even beyond that, in fact, I remember around two cases, they were like, you know what? Uh, I've, I've had uh, uh, pregnancies even to the tune of five. She's had one aborted, another one aborted, and now she is even pregnant and in school right now, and this is the fifth pregnancy. You know, mm -hmm. that is heavy. That is heavy stuff. And therefore, uh, of course, in the advice, one, it's like uh, the, the girl is not meant to abort because that is bad that is she's even threatening her own life and uh, that was the advice but again seeking for them at least to come after the meeting so that we can engage a one-to-one -one. Mm -hmm. because now that is critical and it's not just something that you can answer and forget about it like that there is need at least to make a follow-up so that they are able to really get the gist of the whole story mm -hmm. and how much to help them come out of that idea mm -hmm. it is said biologically that uh, like for example a lady matures even to be decisive to be to be in a position to make the right choice after 25 years mm -hmm. and therefore anybody that is below here is still an error in it either I can or I cannot mm -hmm. and whatever they do probably they make a, 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 a mistake which ends up in a very bad uh, bad state so the idea of uh, having to reach out to them even on personal level is very very key and uh, that's why I really appreciate the education uh, because the, the, the they made sure that in the school we have got the guiding and counseling which is tackling so many cases mm -hmm. so many cases if you meet any of these uh, guiding and counseling uh, mistresses or masters you find that they are really those young people are facing so many issues including incest with the very mm -hmm. close people yeah. in the mm -hmm. family so the advice here is that uh, let these young people open up. They may not open to the parent, they may not open to the person that is close there, but they should not be threatened because normally the predator will tell them, if you open up, I'll kill you. If you open up, I will not pay school fees. If you open up, I will do this. Yes. So they should make a point of going to somebody, not even within that perimeter of the family, if this person is a relative. They can even go to a friend. They can even go to a relative who is an affair. So that they, through that person, 
is able to intervene. Because mm. if they okay. sit on that problem, mm. it is like now sitting on a time bomb. All right, which will and eventually yeah. explode. Just to add one other mm -hmm. thing, and let the parents also be very keen in terms of befriending their children. Mm. Because mm. if yeah. they are not friends, then you realize this kid doesn't know who to go to. And whenever they are in a problem, they are looking, they are wondering, and then they stick in that mess for a long time before you discover it, it has gone too, too far. Okay. So as young as they, are, uh, as they are and as they continue to grow up, mm -hmm. the parents should be available. They shouldn't be the absent parents. Let them be there for their daughters, okay. be there for their okay. sons, okay. so that they're able to guide them and help them. All right. Newton, uh, still on the sexual predation, you operate a home where you even have girls who are abused at a very young age. How do you ensure that that doesn't happen again? Uh, you know, it is. Uh, we can only try to prevent. But you know we are living in a, a world full of immorality and bad things happening mm -hmm. left and right mm -hmm. and uh, we cannot control it 100 percent only god can intervene and uh, help the situation that our children are, are going through now in instance we have seen a lot of uh, uh, news coming up like somebody a lady was being killed in a room a lady has been abducted and the parents are looking for this lady I think uh, the only approach that we can give it is what my colleagues or my friends has actually uh, said, that the parents should be very uh, close to their children uh, to help their children grow in a manner of taking good care of themselves. Um, as a parent of uh, many children, because you know my home, uh, I am supporting many children from inside and from outside, mm. what I have been doing is just to uh, do a lot of counseling through our hospital because we have hospital which actually have the counselors mm. and again uh, through the church because we have a church mm. so we do a lot of counseling to our children and it's just good because uh, since the incident happened mm. the other years which we found one child was being uh, uh, raped and thrown in a forest uh, we have never had such uh, 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 something again. We never had, we never gone through it again. Mm. But it's just by the grace. It's not that we are much perfect in a manner that our children cannot go through the same. Mm. Uh, appealing to the issue of uh, early pregnancy, uh, we have been doing a lot of uh, girl child uh, mentorship program. You will find that most of the girls who are being uh, get into these problems, they lack some uh, things that they need in their life. Like, you know, when the girls start attending their uh, periods, somehow they don't know how to approach it. Mm -hmm. And if the parents are not there to support on giving the necessary uh, parts that they should be using, mm -hmm. that's when now they can in be influenced by other fellow youths who give them little money and then have uh, a sexual uh, course with them, which is not right because it is not about exchange. It's about knowing where God brought you from and where you want to go. Mm. So um, always what I've been uh, advocating is just the, our parents, the parents, because all these ch children, 80% has their children at home, mm. even if not the, the, the biological parent, but they're living with uh, a figure, a, pig, a, a parental figure in whenever they're living. Mm. But when we just leave them to live in this world, the, the problem will be so huge that we cannot solve. Like we have some cases that your child is in maybe in form two, but they're having, is just having two or three children. Mm. So you're still taking your child to school, and again you are taking care of the children, the whom you never know their parents, their fathers, you know. So it's a matter that needs a lot of attention, and I think uh, if we work through the with churches and uh, with uh, a spiritual aspect, we are going to reduce the number. Mm -hmm. And again, the government still, I think there's a, 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 a space between the government and the children. Because now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm living in the community there. You will mm -hmm. find all the schools are sending away the children for school fee, and in between you never know what is happening. Mm -hmm. the, 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 we should work on something that when you take your child to school, the issue of the school fee is not part of the, the, the problem of sending you the children uh, to go and search for the school fee. It should be an agreement between the parent and the school where the child is. So in between here, we had a lot of uh, pregnancy happen during when the child is being sent. Because the teacher will send the children around maybe eight, but your child will get home around six in the evening. So what was in between here?
how do you how do you track your child to know where I say? So we even us as the Republic of Kenya, we actually uh, raising a lot of challenges to our children ourselves. Mm. So there are things that need to uh, to be uh, checked. And again, I don't want to concentrate on only those who are in school. We have our youths who have actually finished their university levels, and uh, some have finished their uh, high school levels. And when they come out, they get influenced into uh, such addiction of the drugs because they have nothing to do at home, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to the, our government, we don't have job opportunity for them. We, we have not created something. Even if you send our children to uh, these other technical institutes, after they come back, we, the government itself has, has not put a place where we are taking them after they get trained. Like for now, you can see most of our nurses are going out, out of the country. Out of our doc most of our doctors are running away. They are going to other countries and work there. Because we cannot accommodate. The government that we are running cannot accommodate our own children. So uh, it is something that should be discussed between mm -hmm. the government. It, ma it should be taken to the parliament. Then it, uh, we need to table it because it's a crisis which if we don't attend to it now, what of the next 15 years to come? We are going to run a country with no respect and with no, and we are going to raise many youths who are not doing anything. And this is the influence for the youths even to get involved in stealing and other things. Even our girls, which are they're the ones who have been uh, being kidnapped and killed, it's not because they want. They are seeing at home, home is pathetic. The mother doesn't have a house. And she was taken to school. I am very sure there's no any girl who has been killed from the village who did not go to school. All of them are university graduates and they have been looking for a job and they will never get the job. Mm -hmm. Then now the people who are having money influence mm -hmm. them and take them to mm -hmm. things that they don't expect. And this, uh, this has been giving us a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, you remember, I was in Turkana and I was trying to talk with our youth in Turkana when I was doing medical camp and give, dispersing food. When I asked them, why, do you, why are you not going to school? And they told me there's no difference between uh, whoever go to school and whoever is not going to school because after school mm. there is no job opportunity so I'm still coming camp. back to stay uh -huh. at the camp with my parents so it's better I don't go to school and I get married with whoever mm. will give my parents many comments you know this thing uh -huh. is making sense all right all right yeah and uh, still on the same uh, Madam Gladys and I remember during our time we had pastoral programs and mentorship program. Mm. Um, largely that has been replaced by uh, the digital era where the gizmos, the tech, the technology. And unfortunately, that technology is also uh, has its downside as well, because looking at some of the things that we are finding in the internet, they're not quite good. And I'll still pick from what Newton has talked about. You find a lot of maybe some of the girls that um, are indulging into some of the activities it's not that they do not know. They are learning. They have degrees. They, they, they are, they are, we had a med student who was also murdered. But unfortunately, some of this is largely because of the fault of the parents. Parents are not becoming friends to their children. I'll give you a practical example. I remember um, one of the mentors I was listening to giving a lecture somewhere. He said, you are a parent. You have, your chil you have a kid or children at the university. Your daughter is coming with a Prado, with a Mercedes-Benz, and sending money. Remember that student is in school. All of a sudden, the student says that I'm able now to pay my, my own school mm -hmm. fees. And asked, asked, where are you getting this money? He said, um, internet jobs. But the parent did not, was not keen to follow it up, to know exactly is this the truth or not. Unfortunately, it's a sponsor. How do you go about this? Let me start by saying that uh, in Kenya Student Christian Fellowship, we are reaching out to 6,000 uh, high schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, now when we talk about high school, we're talking about boys and girls in one place. And uh, because now you have directed your question towards uh, these girls who are indulging in uh, such issues because of social media, mm -hmm. and uh, the parents not being present and not befriending their children, and uh, these, are, uh, these are largely issues that we discuss whenever we meet as leaders on how are we going to handle uh, these kind of issues. Let me start by saying uh, the, uh, the situation that the students are facing, that these are boys and girls, especially now the girls, that uh, most of them have absent mothers. Now say for example, maybe their, their parents died or maybe they are living with their grandmothers. Or let's say, for example, now the parents are there, but they are uh, preoccupied with many things. 
-hmm. And uh, these are some of the issues that uh, us as KSEF, uh, we raise a strong associate who can play, play the role of their mothers because, of, of course, uh, it's not uh, in our ability to be able to, you know, uh, uh, correct things at home. Mm. Uh, but on the other hand, we can uh, avail ourselves very close to them and uh, be there when needed. And uh, that's why we have this program that we visit them weekly and be able to, to, to befriend them, be there for them, answer their questions and be able to handle topics that are going to help them. And the issue of uh, social media indeed is a menace because one thing we understand that uh, these days the word of God has declined uh, in the lives of many youths. Uh, that what they are focusing on is the many social media apps that are there, the Facebook, the WhatsApp, the TikTok, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, the Twitter and many others that uh, the word of God has declined. And this has caused a lot of people deviating from the way of God. Uh, because the much time they spend, they are molded to whatever they spend time with. And so we find that uh, these young girls, uh, that's why they are easily people are find, they are finding things like pornography in their phones and they watch them freely. And uh, other issues, uh, there is also cyberbullying and uh, there's a lot of people are getting out of that place with self, uh, low, uh, self, uh, I'm talking about low esteem. And uh, these are some of the issues that uh, us as KSF we address, uh, we address very much. Just knowing that they might be lacking them in their homes. And so how do we structure our message to be able uh, to, to reach out to them? Like now we, uh, we are emphasizing so much, even at this time, that those parents or, uh, who have their students at, who come at home and they have a student who is a from one, from, from one all the way to form for even the school leavers, they can come to this convention in 6 to uh, 12 because we have such kind of uh, uh, topics being handled like uh, the students in the digital world where we're going to train them that this digital uh, world that came to us where we have the phones and everything in the phone can be used positively to be able to uh, enhance, uh, to, 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 make, uh, uh, to, grow, to make us grow as spirit, spiritually and also to help us shape our lives for a uh, for better life, a better future. And so see, these are some of the things that whenever we get an opportunity, we train uh, both boys and girls that indeed the world is changing, has been modernized. Mm -hmm. And how can we move forward together with it and still retaining the Christian values? Because this media was brought by God and can be used uh, to do the things of God. And we can still impact and influence others through this media. Mm -hmm. And it can affect people negatively when they use them wrongly. And so we have uh, workshops where we answer questions. The students uh, ask all manner of questions and we ask them, those who are dealing, are really addicted to some of these issues like uh, 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 pornography, masturbation, and all, uh, let me say, fornication, mm -hmm. and many other kind of sin that the Bible calls sin, sexual sin. Uh, we take time to pray for them because we know that through prayer, they can relieve from that, they can be um, set free. And so these are, these are, it's a very important time for us, even mm -hmm. in this holiday. And by the way, we usually have these kind of programs every holiday. Okay. Yeah, uh, and we, we, we usually call for mm -hmm. the parents. You know, at this time, uh, we know that they, they'll be free. And when they're not engaged, like our brother was saying, that we need to engage them with such a Christian meetings, mm -hmm. uh, where meetings where they're trained on values and virtues, how to live for God. They're very important. That's okay. why we ask them, send them to those mm -hmm. camps every holiday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, let me pick from where Gladys has left. Send them to the camps every holiday. There was an idea that was mooted, um, Eric, mm -hmm. that um, each and everyone who completes Form 4 should actually first and foremost go for, is it six months or nine months at the NYS? That not only instill values, it's going to give discipline and also um, guide this young man on, or woman. Would you support such kind of an idea? It's a good idea because they are still under care mm -hmm. and they are still growing, still making decisions of life. And therefore, by so doing, actually I'm sure the curriculum that will be developed and be placed in such a kind of institution will be curriculum to mold them to become better people mm -hmm. even after they are done with it. Mm -hmm. uh, we still uphold unto that even as KSEF. We have got a group that finishes school, those that have just finished school one year, two years, three years. We call them the Kenya X Secondary School Associate Teams, KSATs. Mm -hmm. And these are teams that are 
after they are done with school, we don't just let them be. We still pull them together and we induct them on some of the life skills that they need to have as they wait either to go to the university or even to progress life either mm -hmm. through a uh, career that uh, they may want to do later on because some of them will go to a shed and they are trained to become a mechanic mm -hmm. uh, to a tailor and they are trained to become uh, good uh, uh, tailors and things like that so as they are still at home we bring them together uh, soon just after the, they are finished school and we induct them on those modes looking at three specific areas one is about the issue of economic and entrepreneurship so that in that area they are able to know that they are not just supposed to be there they are supposed at least to already have a mind that this is an area that i can move into in which is of my interest it is something that i can do for life and then they begin to flow in that direction and therefore uh, besides that, we also help them to grow spiritually. Uh, this is involving them in activities that are uh, Christ-oriented, mm -hmm. and uh, we bring experts that are able to come and continue helping them in growing in the various doctrines, in the various disciplines, and the various uh, topics that are important to them. And therefore, you'll find them attending either they organize a retreat and they go there, they go cashers, mm. they go there, they organize uh, uh, conferences, and they, we have them being trained. These are young people now that are now out. Mm. And uh, also, besides that, we also have got the social programs that are just supposed to keep their energy. And therefore, we'll, we'll ask them to organize and we go for a retreat, say Mount Longonot. Uh, they go somewhere Mount Kenya like that uh, okay, and, and, and as they do that they are engaged at least there is something that they are doing mm. we will organize for them bonfires we sit here boys have been put together here with uh, an expert probably during this moment there is a couple that has been invited and mm. this couple we for example at one moment they are boys alone they okay. are at a given point, mm. girls alone at a given point, with the mother and with the father. Mm. And then later on, they come together and they are able to ask questions that night. Mm. It is just to ask questions, eat together, socialize, mm. and get to know some of the tips on how they are able to avoid some of the challenges mm. that they may be facing or they have been taught wrongly. Okay. And then besides that, uh, uh, we, we, we also engage them, even through the online, because mm. we also know that that online is very, very practical and uh, uh, they can if we do not allow them there they will still go mm -hmm. so we ask them to do the positive things as madame put it and you find that uh, these young people are having a bible study every week and you will be shocked like in nairobi we, we have got say uh, 10 uh, sub counties according to okay. our okay just because of the interest of time eh? yes and uh, i need to give you uh, at least each a uh, minute a minute as we wrap up yes. we have been piling all this on how we are supposed to do in regards to our kids mm. as parents as we wind up newton what should we be doing especially now that our kids are almost coming for the holidays Mm, number one, we have to make sure that we keep our children busy at home mm -hmm. and we'll request the teachers, I don't know what the ministry is saying about this, but I will request the teachers to give our children a lot of homework so <laughs> they get busy with the school mm -hmm. issues and then home issues and then we give them few time to play. And I, I will ask the parents to restrict uh, sending their, our, their children to relatives whom you don't know how they are living and raising mm. their children because this is a matter that which has brought a lot of uh, challenge to children because they go there and they meet other people without control and uh, they come back with something that they don't understand and we need to restrict our children on the social media as uh, the brother said mm -hmm. uh, social social media has a lot of challenges because the pornographic movies are there Mm -hmm. You will find all this, all everything is in the media, and mm -hmm. our children, they, they are not strong enough to or, uh, or, or overgo or undergo these challenges. So you, they get tempted and they try to practice it, mm -hmm. and that is where we are getting involved, they are getting involved in uh, what is happening now. Lastly, it's just to uh, tell our uh, university students who are mm -hmm. just outside there, because they are still under youth, let not them be influenced by uh, those who have money and titles because this will never uh, give you the future. The future relies on how you behave and the future relies how you bring, uh, being brought up 
and I'm appealing for them to find any church around mm -hmm. which they can go and get the uh, nourishment and they go through the Bible and this will actually help them on their growth in the future. Because mm -hmm. we hope for our youth to be parents as us, yes. we hope our youth to take over the leadership as us, we hope our youth to be the people tomorrow as our parents did during our time. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Gladys, as we, as we wrap up, what is our role here as our parents, as, as parents, because um, I have a teenage daughter and I wouldn't imagine uh, some of the things that I'm seeing and some of the parenting that I'm seeing, I wouldn't want that with any of my children. What yes. is our role, and especially now that they're coming for the holidays? Yes, uh, I would like to talk the, to the parents out there, anyone who is listening, that we have a responsibility given from God to take care of these children. The children that we have our, our, are our responsibility. And not just you alone. That's why we have organizations like Kenya Student Christian Fellowship to help you mold the life of the student. And uh, we encourage them to ensure when they're in, at home to take them to church and uh, send them to these camps that are the Christian camps that are there, like the one we have for Kenya Student Christian Fellowship, and by the way, that they are there every holiday. Mm -hmm. And if they want more details on these camps, they can go to www.ksef.org, and every holiday they can get in touch. And so uh, what, what I can tell them is that they get involved in the life of their student, Let, uh, their children. Let them listen to them. Mm -hmm. Those who are busy at work because of the nature of their work, to ensure that uh, they connect them with their church and even train them how to listen to the right content, even at home, that mm -hmm. the YouTube can, has also preachers who are very sound. If the radio, if the phone, people can uh, install a uh, Bible where it can be continuously reading. Mm -hmm. And for me, I read more Bible than okay. I, I, I visit Facebook. Okay. That's right. Eric, as you report. Thank you. In a minute, uh, I think uh, one is that for the parents to be deliberate. They may be busy. They may be working parents, but at least a portion of time for their children, such that they can talk to them as a group, if they have got two or three. They can talk to them individually. They can even carry them out for a lunch. Mm. Take your daughter, take your son out okay. for lunch. And then number two, mm. uh, they also need to be keen about mm. the organizations that are training. I have got, uh, we know that we have got sponsor groups that are pulling our children, sponsoring our children all over, and especially okay. for those that are poor in them. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if they are asked to go for a training, let them know what is this training, what are they being trained all on, right, because all some right, of them right, can right. be Unfortunately, we are out of time. Thank you so much, <laughs> <laughs> Eric. Uh, that has been uh, quite a, li a lovely and lively panel. We were looking at raising up morally upright youth, and especially now that our kids are coming for the holidays and have been engaging Gladys Karani, who is the National Field Coordinator of the Kenya Students Christian Fellowship. Just next to her, there is Eric Lumosi, who is the Greater Nairobi Region Coordinator of the same fellowship. And just next to Madam Gladys, we have Newton Ogada, who is not only a philanthropist, he is also the director of God Will Provide Children's Home and is also a leadership and governance expert as well. That's where we put a cup. Thank you so much indeed for joining us for this first hour. On the second hour, we are looking at the state of the nation. A lot is happening. As preparation goes, we've uh, probably done our best, um, and that's what matters. So then the next part is up to me when we're behind the wheel in the actual rally for me to do my best, because um, the teams will have done their best in, in pre pre uh, preparing for the race. Yeah. Thankfully and uh, very gratefully, we have uh, 
uh, now engaged uh, with KCB for, for the second year in a row. Uh, we were the KCB drivers last year in the WRC. We were also the KCB uh, bank drivers for the Africa Rally Championship, which we, we won last year. And I think that has helped them get some confidence in us. At the same time, we are very happy with working with them. And uh, I, think the, the, I think the partnership is uh, quite beneficial mutually. Well, the game plan would be definitely still to attack as it was last year, but last year we suffered a few uh, hiccups with, uh, with regards to broken brake pipe, uh, failed power steering, um, and then ultimately uh, a, a damaged clutch due to the fesh fesh. So, yes, the Skoda, I think, is um, obviously it's a different car. It's, a, it's something I'm still getting used to in terms of its uh, character and the way to, to drive it. season is a strong pillar of the Christian faith. My house shall be a house of prayer, and you have turned it into a den of thieves. Here on KBC Channel 1, we have lined up an assortment of programs to commemorate this significant season. Are you the Messiah? If I tell you, you will not believe me. From movies... Take him to heaven! ...to music... Dramas to themed worship shows. Jesus Christ is the beginning and the end. I don't know what you're saying. Ah! We plan to keep you spiritually nourished as we celebrate the death. Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they do. And resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is not just the celebration of the death, but above all, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Why do you seek the living among the dead? KBC Channel 1, Kenya, is watching. Kenya Broadcasting Corporation is Kenya's most trusted news and entertainment brand. Grow your business, acquire more clients, and reach new, diverse audiences by advertising with us. We connect brands to audiences that matter, driving results for brands and enhancing your current marketing strategies. We have packages for all needs, and no product is too small for us. Contact us today and capitalize on our combined power of radio, TV, and digital platforms. KBC, Connecting Kenyans. The rising popularity of emerging digital tools such as artificial intelligence or AI, business leaders and consumers alike are increasingly keen to leverage new and emerging technologies in either making work easier or increasing revenues. This includes those that want hassle-free billing or invoicing and collection of water and power bills for their apartments, estates or commercial buildings. Uh, when I talk about smart, it means we can be able to read all the contents remotely, send them back to Revenue Stadia servers. Uh, once we've gotten that data, we can be able to consume it, uh, generate reports, create um, scripts that we can, now be, we can now use to control the meters. This is an example of a smart power meter. But how do they work and what are the differences as opposed to conventional meters? In controlling the meters, um, we can either switch them on and off. So when I talk about controlling, that is what we do with the meters. They have a breaker inside, we send a command, uh, the command uh, switches it on or it switches off the meter. Mm -hmm. So basically how it works, um, a very much integrated platform, a software, uh, where we get in all the tenants, 
or all the customers, let's assume this is a utility. We get all the customers within uh, our system called uh, Revenue Stadia. Once we've gotten the customers in and uh, we've installed the meters on site, now we assign this particular meter to the customer. We meet Colin Cyril, the head of networks and innovations from Revenue Stadia, a cloud platform that combines billing management and smart meter devices to produce a centralized billing. Collins notes that smart metering technology is uninterrupted and wireless, meaning that users are able to connect to their meters wherever they are. However, this technology still needs collaboration and enabling policy for it to scale. Uh, right now we, have, uh, we only have Kenya Power and small other distributors but for the small distributors they are limited towards their small regions so we would like if the government could open up uh, get so many distributors in a region. Companies like Revenue Stadia are leveraging on technology as demanded by consumers converting day-to-day -day components to smart usable devices. Alan Naoko, Tech One. Welcome back to this second hour where we are looking at the state of the nation. Indeed, thank you so much for keeping it KBC. And a number of things are happening in the country. And let me first of all talk about, remember that uh, Safari Rally just two days to go. And uh, we will be beaming five stages right here on KBC Channel 1 beginning Thursday all the way to Sunday. And away from that, uh, the rays are here with us. Unfortunately, we've already lost seven lives in regards to that. And some a lot of infrastructure has also been destroyed. Remember, it's the long rains and we need to do something in our farms but unfortunately there have been cases of uh, fake fertilizer that has been circulating we'll be delving into that uh, and the doctors continue their strike and it's not gonna get better if things remain the way they are because the clinical officers gave a one-week ultimatum to also join their colleagues in the strike the NADCO report implementation we talk about the there's a brief, some people saying that we should implement it the way it is, others say we shouldn't implement it the way it is because it didn't touch on the main core, that is the cost of living. We're waiting to hear, we also have Weshimiwas here to give us a feel of that. And uh, also we are continuing with the crackdown on illicit alcohol and drug abuse in the country that has been spearheaded by none other than the Deputy President and the Interior CS. 18,000 pubs have been closed for various reasons, including licensing and including others which were near learning institution or residential. And of course, the banditly menace is still with us, but we will be looking at that as well. And not forgetting that uh, the strategic, the government strategic plan that was announced last week by the Ministry of Treasury, we'll be touching on that as well. But without further ado, allow me to introduce my panelists, beginning from my immediate left. Asante Sana Moshimo for making the time. We have the Borab, uh, Bomachoge Borabu MP, Honorable Barongo Obadia. Karibu sana mwishmiwa. Thank you so much. Just next to him, we have our very own uh, a, a resident analyst here, uh, whose name is Harun Isaac, Is Isaac Hassan. 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 Ramadan Karim, brother. Ramadan Karim, thank you. And just next to him, we have Oscar Omonde. He is also a resident analyst. And thank you so much, Oscar, for coming. He's a governance expert and also a lecturer in one of the universities here in the country. We are also expecting um, the Mwingi West MP, Charles Nguna, earlier CNN, uh, who says that he is on the way so just to ge get a balance from both sides, just the government side and also the opposition side. Beginning with you, Mwishmua, the rains are here with us. And um, I'm quite sure you have been to Mashinani and your people, you have encouraged your people to get back to work and ensure that we have something in our farms. But unfortunately, we've had the fertilizer issue. I don't know whether it has come to your, not to your attention in your constituency, Borab. 
Um, thank you so much, uh, Ben. Uh, this issue has been highlighted uh, in the newspapers. I've only seen it in the newspapers. Mm -hmm. It hasn't affected uh, uh, my constituents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, as a leader, and maybe do you sit in any committee that touches on uh, agriculture and other things? No, in the <laughs> National Assembly, I'm in the Committee for Energy. Energy. Yes. All right. Uh, just next to you, we have Dr. Uh, Isaac Hassan. And uh, Doc, we always love the rain because Kenya, 70% of the economy is held by agriculture. But unfortunately, we've had those issues of um, fake fertilizer that has been circulating. And indeed, we have seen. And actually, it began with an expose by the journalist who uh, did a very, very good piece in regards to that. And unfortunately, whoever are in this business are scuttling one of President William Ruto's key projects which was the subsidized fertilizer, so that we may do away with hunger in the country. I would like to pick your mind. Um, ben, thank you very much. Um, I think what is very important is that rains have come. And you know, there's no corruption between God and uh, his creatures. Mm -hmm. He gives us what he wants anytime he wants. And therefore, uh, we get very good rain. Uh, it looks like uh, there are significant uh, uh, effect of... Uh, the rainfall which has been felt already in uh, major cities because of uh, lack of uh, drainages. Mm -hmm. But when we come to the issues of fertilizers, mm -hmm. when we come to the issues of farming, uh, it's all around our value, our respect for humanity, and it's all about, uh, you know, uh, dignity. You'll find people bringing stones and selling them as fertilizers and making money out of that. And it looks, that gives you that people have no value, they have no trust, mm -hmm. and they have, we have lost ground for, uh, uh, you know, uh, dignity. Um, and corruption is the big issue. This trickles down into our regulatory bodies. KEPS is our, the, the key eye of the government. Mm -hmm. KEPS is supposed to be authorizing and approving the quality of every com commodity that comes into the country and it's within the country and if you see uh, bags of uh, stones claimed to be fertilizers mm. are in the market and they are being sold to innocent farmers the problem is not the seller the problem is the regulatory body mm. and i hope our members of parliament will now open up their eye mm. and find a way of strengthening their uh, institutions that are mandated to carry out um, uh, regulatory systems within uh, the country. That is the only way we can save our constituents, that's the only way we can save Kenyans mm. and any other guests who, who are living in this country. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you don't forget, you remember we had the issue of the, sh uh, the poisoned sugar, yes. which has gone into the market mm. from Fika warehouse store with a very great uh, stickers of uh, uh, KRA and uh, KBS. Um, and um, of course, it was under the watch of uh, our police officers, and those has gone into the market and it was sold. What happened? It just hit the headlines. And I, it was politicized, and eventually Kenyans have consumed uh, the poison. And we are just waiting when mm -hmm. we will be affected by that poison that we have consumed. Yeah, because, because actually there are some, a lot of bugs that have uh, never exactly, been accounted for. Exactly. Even those which have been accounted for, mm. we are not very sure. Mm. We aren't certain about whether they are the real ones mm -hmm. or it is just... Uh, uh, you know, uh, formation of uh, or stage stage mm. marking of um, uh, incidents which has occurred and which was a shame to the country. Yeah, Oscar, let's go to the fertilizer. And you do remember that is one of the first things that the head of state did, even after swearing in, he mm. he did away with a number of subsidies, but announced the fertilizer one. And I can tell you for free that farmers are quite happy because of that but unfortunately now we have had cases that uh, are, there's a, a lot of fake fertilizer that is in circulation yeah. and it beats it beats logic because there are agencies that have been tasked with ensuring that anything that goes into our soils anything that goes to our stomach 
Yeah. <coughs> you see, thank you very much again, Troy, for inviting me here again. But uh, what do we come to discuss here? Mostly, it's a brand new crisis. Mm -hmm. I told you that every week you invite me here as a resident analyst. <laughs> You're always calling me to discuss a crisis. <laughs> Last time you invited me to discuss again in Bakasi, uh, gas thing. Then you the invited doctor's me strike. to the, the doctor strike. Yeah. Then you invited me to discuss. There's a time we're discussing alcohol and uh, the effect on it yes. in the lives of people. Mm -hmm. Now it is a, always a brand new crisis. But because of uh, poor management and poor governance, and the people in authority are not interested, I think they are part and parcel of this. Because if you talk about fake sugar, if you talk about uh, what m uh, my colleague here speaks about, it is just the obvious thing. But, for example, the fertilizer, as soon as the president said we, there would be subsidy in fertilizer, and he made fertilizer, a talk of town that this is the thing that this is the big thing in Kenya Kwanzaa government. There's a fertilizer. Mm -hmm. It was bound to be abused by businessmen, businessmen outside there, because when you talk about this fertilizer, unless the government is able to supply enough, otherwise, anybody, the business people who have been making profits, the cartels mm -hmm. who have been enjoying big profits in the politics around fertilizer will always take advantage in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Because when you do a subsidy, for example, or something like that, the question is how many people have been cut off out of business? For example, even you talk about 18,000 bars that have been closed, mm -hmm. 18,000, somebody else, somebody must fit in that gap. So you will see these pubs mushrooming, but illegally. People will start selling alcohol in their bedrooms. Oh, during COVID, you remember yeah, during yeah, COVID. The, the pub is open, people yeah. drink inside, yes. you're locked inside. Yes. So when you, which is all, you, we will be just watering down the gains that we have made. The, the gains last that we've months. made. So anytime you find a policy like that one made by government, there'll always be a way these people who've been cut off, the 18,000 bars, they have alcohol, they mm -hmm. have it, they will sell it. The only business they know is to sell alcohol. So they will sell it as an illegal, an illegal product. What happens at that, uh, at that level? Now, even where they get that alcohol, and those breweries that have been closed or that have been shut off, those people were in big business. They were minting millions and billions. I promise you, they will not go out of business. Mm -hmm. They will be in business, but illegally now. Mm -hmm. Again, Kenya breweries or uh, whatever who, who manufactures alcohol, mm -hmm. it is said that during COVID time, when the bars were closed and whatever was happening, that is when they made their big profits. And I'm telling you, in town now, if you study about the alcoholic trade, a lot of alcohol is traded online, mm. as opposed to alcohol being traded over the counter. Mm. That means that closing the physical bars does not really stop this menace. Mm -hmm. So when we do policy, sometimes we have a knee-jerk uh, solution in, in political science. Are you saying that maybe this whole effort will be fruitless? It is fruitless. And I said, it's your last, I said it's your last time. That is fruitless because mm -hmm. we cannot do... Let's take a, a, t a good context where a pub that has been shut down was just next to a school. Yes. How, that be, how is that watering down? He just closed the door, then, then sell it. He will just, he has the numbers <laughs> of these guys. He will just okay. close the door. The okay. we, we, we were in the fertilizer. I wanted okay. us to touch on the alcohol a little bit later. Yes. But okay. I, I want to go back to Mwashimiwa because you are the lawmakers and Kenyans will really be looking to see how parliament responds to that and what, what other tight, watertight measures that parliament comes with to ensure that farmers are protected. Because at the end of the day, the still farmer is still spending his money buying the fertilizer and it's, it's, it's quite uncouth if at all he will be buying fertilizer that is not going to help him after buying it from government. Um, I think we're a, a country of laws and um, we are not short of laws to deal with uh, this kind of uh, problem. Mm -hmm. um, it is an enforcement problem. The uh, investigative agencies should move in, anti-corruption uh, agencies should also come in, make sure that you know this problem is traced to a particular uh, individual within the National Cereal and Pro uh, Produce Board, mm -hmm. and that this person is actually made to pay for, for their 
negligence or lapses on the job. Mm -hmm. Also, the Kenya Bureau of Standards, um, I think, should also be held responsible here because how do you supply fertilizer to National Cereals and Produce Board that has not been uh, looked into, that has not been tested? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, my take is that this is a problem of enforcement mm -hmm. um, and <coughs> that if the enforcement agencies were to move in and uh, we get these culprits and prosecute people here, uh, then there will be a sort of a fear mm -hmm. of uh, this kind of thing being uh, replicated again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Doc, you are actually a doctor and uh, your colleagues uh, have downed their tools and the clinical officers say that in the next more or less like a week we are also downing ours and the hardline stance is that have been we have witnessed even on television you see one one news article the doctors are saying this you see another article where the the, 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 the health officials are talking about something quite different um, the, the problem as we speak is serious and if we rope in the clinical officers now the the problem will be compounded do we have an end in sight? The hardline stand. How do we ensure that uh, what the government is, is talking about and what the union of the doctors are talking about, at least they meet somewhere in the middle? Because at the end of the day, me and you are the ones who are suffering. Uh, ben, devolving health at early stages of devolution was not right because health is one of the key components uh, within the society that maintains the well-being of uh, the society. And what happens is that if, if we are not very keen in addressing issues related to health, then we'll get into <coughs> a, a sick nation because a healthy nation will never be productive. And therefore, uh, the crisis has been there all through. There are already agreements that has been made in previous uh, strikes. And government promised or signed to acknowledge those agreements and implement it. And now doctors are complaining of um, uh, dishonest from the government. Because if you <coughs> have agreed that you're going to do certain things and mm. you have signed for it, uh, of course people expect you to honor that. And if you fail to honor that, mm -hmm. means then <coughs> we are not likely to move uh, together. Yes. And therefore, um, I think one way or another the strike is genuine, mm -hmm. one way or another the, this strike is long overdue, mm -hmm. because if every cabinet secretary who is um, appointed to, to head Ministry of Health comes with his own idea and not implementing what the previous cabinet secretaries have, Mm -hmm. agreed in the memorandum of understanding mm -hmm. then <coughs> it's like we start every other time and uh, if the government is not in a position to do certain thing I think it is good for the government to come bold and say hey guys this component that you are demanding is difficult for us to implement it and therefore uh, based on um, the current uh, situation we'll be able to implement this this other one give us aggressive period mm -hmm. and that's logically how professionals argue their points and uh, expect the government as well to replicate that but when you see uh, every other time that the, the, um, the doctors or the medical um, medics uh, start uh, strike uh, threats come you declare the strike illegal from your side but the labor laws give you opportunity to uh, express your um, your challenges or problems through uh, demonstrations mm -hmm. or strike and that's the language that the government understand I tend to think so and therefore we are trying to have you know severe um, uh, effect on the people who are consumers of health services <coughs> at the periphery People who have money go to private hospitals and they have no uh, whatsoever effect uh, or they are not affected by this strike. But majority of Kenyans cannot afford private uh, medical services. Yes. And therefore, they expect the government to take drastic measure in resolving the current issues that is arising and of course adhering to 
what they have already uh, consented to and delivering or implementing the same so that the common Mwanainchi who is not able to salvage himself from this current problem mm -hmm. gets back his services. In any case, even our services within the facilities are not uh, perfect. You'll find uh, people going to the <coughs> hospital, mm -hmm. doctors giving you prescriptions. There are no drugs in the pharmacies. County government is not there to supply any drug. People are told to go and buy from an outside or outlet uh, chemist. And all those chemists are owned by um, the health workers mm -hmm. or the health facilities, uh, the health, um, the medics. And therefore, there will be conflict of interest. And that's why recently, uh, <coughs> Professor uh, C.S. Kindiki said that if, if you are law enforcer, you shouldn't be owning a pub. a pub. Yes. And therefore, we are saying also, mm -hmm. if you are a medic mm -hmm. and working for the government, you shouldn't be owning a clinic or a chemist. That way, we know the medic will not going to have mm. uh, conflict of interest. Sometimes it is by deliberate that medics prescribe drugs that are not in the pharmacy. The, we, we know certain drug can be used to treat certain conditions. Mm -hmm. But you know we have options, varieties. Yes. And therefore, the ones in the pharmacy mm -hmm. at uh, the uh, sub-county hospital, or mm -hmm. level 4 hospital, or level five, uh, 3 hospital, he will not prescribe that. He will pre prescribe tailored uh, prescription that you know very well he will going to find it in his own uh, clinic or mm -hmm. chemist. These are the things that we want the government to look at it keenly so that they're able to, mm. uh, you so know... we are having a strike, but unfortunately there are some doctors exactly. who are also... Benefiting. Exactly. And it's so something that has been there for years, man. Yeah, I think for us to sort out this issue, I think they should completely withdraw the devolution of the health services, form a commission, a commission that will go into manage health within the country, because, uh, for example, in UK, they have National Health uh, Service. That's a commission. It's not, uh, it's not the county, because mm -hmm. they also have county uh, uh, administrative units. Um, our teacher service commission has so shown a very great example of how commissions can manage uh, personnel of uh, uh, certain institutions. Okay. And okay. He health mm -hmm. will be better when they are uh, managed by a commission than when current devolved system is managed. All right. Uh, and Oscar, still on the health, I'm looking at what um, the former uh, health CS Mutai Kagwe said, and I quote him. Uh, he said, this house here, Afia House, has his fair share of madmen. That is exactly what he said. Mm. The CS now, health, Susan Nakumicha says that uh, here we have cartels and there are some people who are trying to bulldoze the, 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 the sector. And it leaves Kenyans more or less fragile and at the middle because they do not know exactly what to do if they are madmen here, there are some corrupt individuals mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing it cascade to exactly what we are having now, yes. the doctor strike. And unfortunately, we still haven't had any end in sight. Uh, I don't like going into so much in-depth analysis of such a thing mm -hmm. because I sometimes use hospitals and public hospitals. Yes. There are no doctors. The capacity of the people whom you find there is not enough. At the end of the day, there are countries that need this type of professions. The long-term effect of this, those guys might not all just participate. They participate in those strikes. Mm -hmm. But you'll see a migration. Now, what uh, my colleague here is talking about, these people migrating from public service mm -hmm. to the private, because they're frustrated. The nurses are not migrating even to the private. Even the government itself is trying to campaign so that we send almost 2,000 or 3,000 nurses to Saudi Arabia. Because but we still need a lot of nurses here. We still need a lot of doctors here. How can we have such policies? We are the same government, which the doctors, why are the doctors uh, striking now? They want interns to be employed. That is their main reason of striking today. Because they're saying they have an agreement with even the current CS. Mm -hmm. A thousand 
Interns will be employed at whatever rates they are agreed every year by January. Mm -hmm. But again, at the same time, the same CS is campaigning that we have to send some, other, uh, some of our personnel abroad. These personnel are truly needed abroad. They will go. Some of these guys, the, the long-term effect, the long-term impact of such a strike is that after the strike, you will find by the end of the year, the strike might end next month. <coughs> but people get frustrated. I remember when, uh, I think in January, there was a strike, I think in 2017, and I met some of these guys. When I called some of these funny, these guys who are in, in the service, nurses, in my local village, told me, oh, I left for Australia. Somebody I left for Canada. Why? Because it was difficult to work in Kenya. Why? Because the frustration was never ending. People get exhausted with this type of discussions, with this type of strikes. Mm. You know the former KPDU officials, Oluga and the rest, one time arrested and were put in jail because of this. How many cabinet secretaries have we had from Kagwe to all of them mm -hmm. who've tried for the last 10 years? Mm -hmm. We've had a problem. The problem has been for the last 10 years. Some of the CBAs we're talking about are CBAs that were signed in 2017, earlier than that. So the problem has always been there. We are not putting enough money to help. We have the Abuja Declaration, which declared that every country in Africa should put at least 15% of its budget to health. Our budget, what we put to health now, is only 6%. So we are short of almost, how many? Almost 8%. Almost 8% that we should put into the health. Even the, whatever uh, President William Bruce and the Kenya Kwanzaa implemented, is, is implementing the from the national health to SIF, is it called SIF? Mm. Right. If we don't have, if we don't spend so much money, and Moshimua should tell us here that when they do their deliberations, we should go back and read the Abuja declaration and put so money in health. The problem here, Troy, is nothing, it's money. Put mm. money and give these guys money. If the interns employ mm. them, it's just money. It's just about, not about going to court and doing this or doctors are doing this. People just want decent pay for whatever they're doing. And health mm. is very, very important. Very true. Uh, ben, <coughs> ben, I just want to, uh -huh. I, well, I just want to make Kenyans understand mm. why doctors are saying interns must be employed. Mm. You know, people might think that, why is it a concern for them to have interns in the hospitals? Uh, hospitals, uh, in, uh, medics work in a chain where one graduates, the other one gains uh, knowledge from that experience. One, once that exits, this other one goes in place of that one, mm -hmm. and then the new one comes in. It's not where you are just uh, employed and you don't need any experience to, or any, you know, because when you are managing a case, mm -hmm. cases are not as, ba as per the books. Cases are as per the way you have seen, uh, see, seen it on um, the real life situation. Okay. And these are the knowledges that are, need to be transferred before the senior doctors retire or even leave the service. Oh. And therefore, if you don't bring that, if you cause continuity, mm -hmm. then there will be a gap. It's like a whole year you say children will, should not be born. That means you will have a whole generation uh, gap. Mm. It's a similar thing that will going to happen if you break the circle yeah. of uh, So they the really chain. need to absorb Exactly, they need to be absorbed. Interest. And it's not must that they should be given f uh, complete employment mm -hmm. uh, after their internship. But how many of them will be released into the market with knowledges that are supposed to be utilized to benefit the society. All right. Moshimiwa, let's look at uh, some constitutional <coughs> crisis that the can country <laughs> is, is really struggling with. The delimitation. The constitution uh, gives, 12, gives us 12 years for the delimitation of boundaries. Unfortunately, the 12 years are lapsing. And not only that, is that we do not even have um, fully functional IEBC. You are the lawmakers. How do we remedy this? Because already we are already hit the threshold of 12 years. Um, I think what should, what should um, happen mm -hmm. uh, is that um, very, very urgently the NADCO report yes. should be uh, discussed, debated, and uh, uh, already we should start implementing the report. Mm -hmm. uh, we are currently um, out of session. We resume, I think, around uh, April, around the 10th. Mm -hmm. 
I think the business of the House uh, very quickly should move into constituting the IBC, which means um, that there's a selection panel um, uh, should be uh, put in place very quickly so that then they can start uh, constituting the IEBC by um, choosing the commissioners and also the, uh, the, the, chair, the chairperson. Mm -hmm. So that then, um, w w once, once you have constituted the IEBC, uh, now we could conduct the, uh, the by-elections for regions that uh, don't have representation. I think there is a constituency uh, that doesn't have a, a member of parliament at the yes. moment. Yes. And, uh, and even some wards. And, and they are actually, and even some wards, mm -hmm. they are actually disenfranchised in the sense that uh, um, the, this constitution hasn't, uh, any their rights have been infringed in the sense that they don't have uh, a representative. And um, the constituency uh, or boundaries delimitation can also not happen if you don't have uh, a fully constituted IEBC. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that. Uh, uh, the plate of uh, the National Assembly is full when we resume, mm. and I hope that the speakers of both houses should be able to facilitate discussion of these bills so that we have an IEBC in place and so that this process can uh, play out. It's a good thing that you acknowledge that we need to implement the NADCO report despite a, a number of issues where we haven't met in a common ground. A good example is the constitution of IBC, which has been contentious. Um, another issue still on the NADCO report is that um, some of the even people who participated in that, in the, in, in the whole exercise, says that, say that what we exactly were sent here by Kenyans, we haven't actualized that, and that is the high cost of living. We don't have all that, Moshima. Um, there have been complaints in regards to the composition of IEBC. If we have issues with the composition of IEBC, we don't have an IEBC, it's going to take a number of months, if not a year to okay. get commissioners in office, mm -hmm. a fully-fledged IEBC. How do we expedite this, Moshimu? And actually, the ball is squarely in Parliament's court. There are nine bills that Pending. are supposed to be executed by both houses of Parliament. Mm -hmm. um, once these bills are in place, uh, they will describe the manner in which uh, the process of selecting these commissioners and even arriving at a chairman is going to be mm. how, how, how the process is going to play out. We, once these bills have been debated, discussed and considered and have been passed, anything that, is, uh, <coughs> that can be done immediately um, uh, through parliament will be achieved through the bills and anything that will require a plebiscite um, I think will be brought before the Kenyan people for for um, for a referendum to be done on uh, whatever the issues are. For example, like the structure of government and anything that will be requiring uh, money to be spent. And even a referendum cannot be done if the IEBC is not properly constituted, because that is their responsibility. Mm. So I, I hold the view that um, once we are in session, it is the responsibility of parliamentarians to make sure that uh, we um, debate, consider these bills, and do anything else that is required to establish the IEBC first, mm -hmm. because everything uh, 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 else will follow uh, mm -hmm. the constitution of that IEBC. Mm. And Moshima, um, do you support uh, the implementation of the NADCO report as it is, or should there be some amendments? Uh, you know, I represent, uh, or I come from the Azimio coalition, uh -huh. and you saw very clearly our principles, uh, uh, Baba and Kalonzo, wow, the view that uh, these issues have been debated, public mm -hmm. participation has been done on them, mm -hmm. and that actually uh, the report should be implemented exactly as it is. But Moshimua, to be very honest, Anything? I'm quite sure people from Barabu would want to see some things in regards to high cost of living addressed there. So if we impl implement it as it is, it means that the Wanjiko from uh, your constituency will not have had he, his or her words and uh, views taken in in the Nadiko report. Um, remember uh, 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 Baba when he gave his press conference, he yes. said the, this report is a good report. Mm -hmm. it, it marks a step 
in a positive direction for the Kenyan people. Mm -hmm. You also made an observation that that report will obviously be um, having people who will not be in full support. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why if you again uh, want to redo this process again, mm -hmm. it will be like a, 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 a strategy to derail the implementation of this of this of this uh, of this report, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure the Kenyan people don't want this process to continue to drag because um, uh, we have already wasted a lot of time uh, putting this uh, committee in place, mm -hmm. and this committee has actually brought. Uh, this committee has actually brought this report and what is remaining is for the report to just be implemented as it is all right all right that at least it's a good thing you cleared the air on that <laughs> uh, doc uh, um, one of the issues with that kenyans we have we are the mm, last minute people yes. uh, in yes. anything that we do the last minute now as we as we are staring at this constitutional crisis we don't even have an iebc and uh, bunge has gone to recess you know, we do not have a fully fledged. Yeah, we have a few commissioners here and there, but it's not quite constituted. I'd like to pick your mind in regard to that. Oh. And remember the delimitation of <laughs> the, boundaries. the boundaries have hit the threshold yes. of 12 years. You know, somebody may ask Moshimua, where were we 12 years? You should have done this. Because if that doesn't happen, that means that all these constituencies will, be, will not be constituencies no more. Um, ben. Wana semanga ukista jabu ya Musa yes. utaona ya Fironi. Yes. Sio sisi tumesema mm -hmm. this is a proverb that has been placed long ago. And in Kenya we are we have unique things. When did a uh, Nadiko report became superior mm. to the constitution of Kenya? Mm. We have the constitution of Kenya uh, article 89 that is stipulates how the limitation of boundaries is supposed to be conducted mm. and this is not a new document yes this is not our pending <coughs> bill mm -hmm. this is already a law and if we have that in place then parliamentarians have failed their um, res responsibility and mm. their role mm -hmm. and i tend to think mm -hmm. that parliamentarians should carry their own cross and if kenyans should wake up and say i think we need to dissolve parliament as soon as yesterday Mm -hmm. The reason being, yes. people talk about Nadiko. Moshima mentioned about issues of Nadiko report mm. anchored on uh, uh, IEBC commissioners. Why do we anchor that and subject the country into constitutional crisis when we are able to do the, the, what is supposed to be done mm. based on the layout of the constitution that, <coughs> we, that is governing us? Yes. So the important thing that I think our leaders and mm -hmm. the Kenyans at large should yes. know is that we have failed to, to pick our, uh, our part in the right time. Mm -hmm. we, are, we have put ourselves into a constitutional crisis that doesn't uh, warrant uh, any excuse. Mm -hmm. And our parliamentarians should come out very clearly and say, hey guys, we know there was a political process that was going outside parliament. Just imagine we did not send them into parliament to go and hand over their role to outsiders who go and sit outside there to negotiate <coughs> on a political process. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that has happened. But why are we subjected to their report when we know that their report will be subjected to Kenyans to validate whether they will going to be adopted mm -hmm. or not? If that is the case, then we will be in crisis will never go anywhere far and I tend to think as Moshimua even put it the constituency which is next to mine Mandera West mm -hmm. Banisa constituency which has been carved out of Mandera West uh, the member of parliament passed on a year ago and almost a year and months they have no member of parliament or they have no representative in parliament mm -hmm. why are we subjecting Kenyans into such situation when we know that our constitution has all the mandate to guide us and do what is needed to be done. All right. Number two, uh -huh. we know very well, um, IBC, uh, um, of late now, I hear um, one of our members of parliament from Mandera North, uh, Major Bashir, is driving a bill showing that if parliament have failed to do their work and uh, in constituting, um, IBC commissioners, then we should also have a law that opens window for the secretariat 
to carry out uh, uh, to carry out uh, by elections and any other things that appertains including the, uh, including the boundaries mm. uh, that supposed to be conducted by IEBC okay and therefore mm -hmm. that bill is more crucial and important than actually people thinking of NADCO and of course <laughs> the article, <laughs> all right, all right. Eight, article 89 yes. that they have already abused it. All right, because of the interest of time, allow me kindly to just uh, give uh, Moshimua CNN. Karibu sana Moshimua Chao Sumguna. I'm so, so used to calling you CNN. You. And uh, thank you so much indeed for joining us. We are exactly where we should be. We, ha we are staring at a constitutional crisis in regards to, to the delimitation of boundaries mm -hmm. and um, the implementation of the NADCO report, of which IEBC, as, uh, the issues of IEBC have been conversed in that uh, document. But unfortunately, we don't seem to be finding a common ground in regards to how even commissioners should be, should be um, the, the commissioners actually, the, the, the panel actually even to select the commissioners should, should be constituted. We are in a constitutional crisis. You guys have gone for recess. Mm -hmm. What do we do? What do, does Wanjiko do now? Actually, we have to admit and declare officially Kenya is facing a constitutional crisis. Mm -hmm. We are in Lacuna State, as I put it, and we've never been here before since the independence. And uh, I empathize with the people of Banisa, what they are going through. And one of the issues, actually, I was stressing on point, without even hesitation, we are supposed to be in full swing in terms of implementing the NANTICO report so far. As you know, there are so many issues that were raised up. Uh, the issues of IBC, they are there, they are fully catered. Issues of increasing commission from seven to nine. And I agree with my brother here from Mandera. We need to have uh, an IBC whereby even secretariat can carry out the issues of elections yes. without yes. necessarily I, I concur, waiting Mishma. for the constitution of these commissions. Mm. Because we cannot allow again to have a constitutional crisis. At the moment, I have to say, we are in that state. And as members of parliament, I am happy for Kenyans are seen we are having a very weak parliament. Mm -hmm. And I've always stressed it out. And that is why even in Antico report, we recommended issues of establishment and entrenchment of uh, state officers like the leader of opposition should be there. The office of the prime minister should mm -hmm. be there. And these issues in the Nantico report are going to totally iron out mm. all this crisis you are seeing as experiencing. So Nantico report mm. must be expeditiously implemented. As it is? Yes. But Mushimua, let's be, be fair. Wanjiku was never mentioned anywhere in that report it, in regards it, to the it, high cost it, of it, it, Wanjiku was mentioned indirectly. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look at the issues of... <laughs> but it, Wanjiku they, is the reason why even that was if, 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 if you look at uh, huh? the way we conducted the, the dialogue committee, mm -hmm. actually, oh, so many institutions were involved in terms of coming up with ideas. Mm -hmm. And Wanjiku in this matter will be carried by the lead of opposition, who is keenly, mm -hmm. who will be keenly actually listening to the voices of Kenyans. You have seen the punitive taxes. Mm -hmm. We have already imposed to Kenya. But NADCO was supposed to also talk about the high cost of living. And unfortunately, it is, it is it's indeed. not a cloud, even a clause there. there. Mm. It indeed, and the issue is there. And it will fully address these issues. When we create the strong office of opposition, <sighs> it means we are going to have I'm people much more checking the, 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 the performance of the executive. <laughs> because we have been seen. Look at even the issue of privatization, which is actually, which is actually happening now. The government is running the... The state parastatos, they, see so, uh, it's, uh, they are true. private. All right, right. All right. All right. I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to interrupt Moesh more, but I just want to ask one question. I just want to ask him one question. Moesh, yes. are you confirming that the leader of the majority and the, le the leader of the minority have failed in their job and their capacity is not... Uh, uh, suitable for the, them to run the office I that warrants you guys to the, have yes, a leader, the, the leader of, of official uh, opposition. Official it's opposition. not even in the constitution. Yes. Yes. It, it, it is clear. Just come outside that they clear. cannot do their work. It is clear uh, parliament is under state capture. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I have repeated it many times. Mm. We have a weak parliament at the moment. What we need to do 
it is to stress up the issues of creating leader of opposition office mm. so that issues raised by the Kenyans can go through without we of course I don't doubt the capacity of leader of minority mm -hmm. he has got capacity to do so but the president and the executive have incapacitated opposition mm -hmm. by luring the people who are already in Azimio mm. to join the other side of the government that sure. they have been voting mm. on these issues which are present Kenyans without mm. necessarily interrogating them by the impact. You can see even in central Kenya right now, MPs are going all over now. <laughs> they never <laughs> understand. All right, all right, all right. Let, let, before we, 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 we don't want to be that to do politics right now. We need that. L L L L Oscar, sorry, sorry, I've been keeping just, you on ice for a while. <laughs> yes, <laughs> let me just <laughs> inject in a bit because of time. Eh? Yeah. Issues of NADCO report, dead on arrival, it will not be implemented. From just this discussion, we are going round and round, all over. We are always going round and round. I've read all the nine bills that uh, Boshinua talked about. Mm. The nine bills, if you read them carefully, it is completely different from the NADCO report. Completely mm. different. Whatever they've drafted in the bills are mm. different. The nine bills were drafted by Kenya Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. Some of the reasons why they drafted it, they don't want to go for a referendum. For a house to have a, house, a, a, a member of a leader of opposition in parliament, it has to go for a referendum. Mm. What they have in that bill is that the leader of opposition will be out of parliament. That means they're not going to change the structure of government. Mm -hmm. The discussion about public participation, there's no bill that will go into parliament without a public participation. It will go to court. Mm. If it goes to court, it will flop. The same way a lot of Kenya Kwanzaa bills that have gone into parliament, including the House Levy, which is going round and round, doesn't go through public participation. They mm. end up in court and they are dead on arrival. So Nadiko report is dead, will not come. We mm. don't see the light of day because of the... Uh, uh, the are here. Just let just let, finish, let them finish. have a right of just, reply. Just to finish, just yeah. to finish. Issue of, uh, issue of, I'm not coming back again, yes, issue yes. of uh, uh, the IBC, the elimination of boundaries. Mm -hmm. It should be done at least between 2020, it was supposed to be done between 2020 and 2024. Mm -hmm. And then it should not be done 12 months to the general election. That means it must be done by, tw by, by, by 2026 August. Mm. That is 12 months to the general election. If you go through the public participation and people agreeing, whether to have this boundary or that boundary. Then we go through the court processes. The remaining time won't allow us to finish the boundary delimination. So even that process of the boundary delimination is also dead in arrival because we are too late. We are going into the end of election 107. We have less than two to three years to go to that agenda. We won't be able to do it also. Uh, let me let the viewers have right of reply. Um, the, our university donor and a governance expert here says that uh, it will not see the, end of the, the light of day. And uh, also the issue of public participation, Mwashimiwa. Do you believe that we need an act, the public participation act? Because what is provided is only provided not only as a law in itself, it's provided in the, just in the constitution. And that is why every time these laws are being challenged in court, every time something the government uh, makes a policy, you hear public participation at the end of the day. Do we need that? I think there should be a, a public participation act that will describe clearly what uh, outcomes come from the public participation. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, the Finance Bill 2023, it was passed. Mm -hmm. Um, and the government side said that they did a comprehensive public participation on it. But the comprehensive public participation that they had on it, mm -hmm. the, um, the overall uh, views of the public were that it was uh, punitive and that it needed to be, uh, it needed to be uh, done away with. But what was presented in, in, on, the, on the floor of the House? It was that uh, the country is very happy and that this bill, we should actually proceed and pass, pass mm -hmm. it. So I think having a public participation act that, w that will uh, set a threshold uh, for what uh, really comes out of it that should go to the floor of the, of the house is something that should uh, actually be considered. Mm. Mishima, you also uh, write of the plan. Public participation mm -hmm. is entrenched in our constitution. Now. Yes. But there's if, no act on, on If that. you look at it, uh, mm. we don't necessarily even need that act. When, they, they are, when the, the, the public participation is already in the constitution, what we need to do, like what finance committee did, it went contrary to what we got from the public. Mm -hmm. 
implementing a housing levy that was actually opposed by almost 90% of the people who, were, who did public participation. Mm. What we need is just to be, uh, to, to have what we call fidelity in terms of implementing these public participation mm. uh, issues. So the finance committee went contrary to what Kenyans expressed in terms of the housing levy mm. and many other issues. So I think public participation is a necessary, mm. it's, it's necessary mm. to have it. But why are we not implementing what we are getting on the crowd? Mm. 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 All right, yes, yes, yes Oscar. One, I think this one, you're a bit, you're a bit contradicted. Mm -hmm. Because you've said that Wanjiko's ideas to the NADCO report were implemented indirectly. Troy here mm. says that according to him, from mm. what he has from the public opinion, was that NADCO report should have and try something to do with cost of living. That is what Wanjiko is saying. But now you are Mushimiwa, you want us to no. pass the same medical report as it actually is. Actually, mm. federations, no, right. institutions, uh -huh. even people, even uh -huh. anyone, any caucus that came up, mm. came to the, to, to report in the Nantico report, the, their views were clearly captured. If you read very carefully, mm -hmm. if you go through the report, you can see the number of people who are cost of But unfortunately, yeah. even Eugene uh, Amalo and, and Martha Karoa have... Uh, cost of have living was yeah. element number two. And what do I you think say? Kenyans never <laughs> read. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, uh, my yes. director informs you that our time is up. Uh, Moshimua, let me give you uh, 30 seconds to wrap it up. I think um, le let's not dismiss uh, what will come out of the implementation of the NARCO report mm -hmm. on the floor of the House. Mm -hmm. um, it is very unfortunate to say that the NARCO report is going nowhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you will be um, pretending to not know exactly mm -hmm. why we got uh, uh, to, to where we, to where are, we are now. Uh, yeah. in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I'd like to encourage all of us uh, especially Moshimua when this thing comes to the floor of the, of the House. We need um, to petition, especially the speakers of the houses, to allow us to make a contribution in ensuring that these bills are in place so that we can uh, eliminate the constitutional crisis and move on to other things. Dr. Sun, 20 seconds kindly. We are in crisis. Yes. We have been taken there by our members of parliament. They should remove Kenya out of the crisis. Oscar, Nas 10 Nas seconds. National dialogue was not done. Mm -hmm. People did not agree. Common ground was not reached. Nadiko report has reached, has arrived in Parliament without a common ground. Moshimwa CNN? We have grounded this like Moshimwa CNN here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to listen to the views of Kenyans. Yeah. The Sky Team now. Yeah. We, there's a new Sky Team in okay. Parliament. All right. So Thank you so much. Us, <laughs> that has been Moshimwa Charles Nguna Ngusi Nguna, a CNN Wingy West yes. MP. We have a university down here, uh, Oscar Omondi, who is also a leadership and governance expert. Thank you so much indeed for coming. We have Dr. Isaac Harun Hassan, who is a leadership and governance expert and also a regular here. And just last but definitely not least, we have Barongo Obadia, who is, the, who is the MP for Bomachoge Borabu. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Much. That's why I put a cup, but let's continue this conversation on our social media platform. My name is Ben Troy Njue, and uh, Susan Thuku has been our sign language interpreter. We started out with Lensa Odingo. Do have a good one. KBC Channel 1 imeanda vipindi speciali katika mwezi mtukufu wa Ramadhan mwaka huu kwa ajili yako. Allahu Akbar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kando na ukumbi wa Kiislamu na hutuba ya Ijumaa kutakuwa na makala yanayoangazia maswala ya funga, mawaidha, whoever witnesses the month of Ramadhan then he should fast. Vipindi vya mapishi katika mapishi ya Ramadhan tutatayarisha pilau 
ya korofo. Utahitaji viazi, vitungu vinne vikubwa na zabibu na kaswida mbali mbali. Ramadhan kana. Pia tumekuandalia kalenda ya Ramadhan ili kukuweka kwenye mstari wa mbele katika funga yako. Tazama runinga ya KBC Channel 1 katika mwezi huu mtukufu wa Ramadhan ili kukuza na kuhifadhi imani yako. Channel One. We are a TV station like no other. Get a taste of the best in entertainment. Yes, indeed. Feel the passion. Will you promise me? I swear that you will never lose me. I can't get married to you. I'm sure you know. That's why you're making fun of me. 